chapter 1, verses 9 to 15. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptised by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven, You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness for forty days, tempted by Satan, and he was with the wild beasts. And the angels waited on him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Today is the first Sunday in Lent, when traditionally we focus on Jesus' temptation in the wilderness as a model for our own overcoming of our temptations, whatever those might be for us. Now, sometimes on the first Sunday of Lent, the lectionary reading is from Matthew or Luke, where we have a much longer account of Jesus' temptations with details of the temptations that he faced and how he dealt with each one. But this year it's Mark, with all its short and sharp description of Jesus, the wilderness, the wild beasts and the angels. Right at the start of his ministry, Jesus is driven by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. This is part of his training for ministry to come, an intense time, a time of endurance, of isolation. It's no coincidence that the word quarantine literally means 40 days. Now, Satan's intention was to tempt Jesus away from the mission that God had given him, to question his identity as the Son of God, and to try and divert him with offers of quick and glittering success, rather than the hard task of saving the world that he'd been sent by God to fulfil. So this was quarantine for Jesus, alone in the wilderness with the trainer from hell, literally. Now, in the Bible, the wilderness has always been a place of encounter with God. God's people, Israel, wandered in the wilderness for 40 years. Elijah spent 40 days in the wilderness and there had his most profound encounter with God. We've become familiar, haven't we, with our own kind of testing in the wilderness experience over the past year due to the suffering and restrictions of COVID. Although not comparable with Jesus' desert temptations, isolation has become a very real concept for many of us. Not being able to access all the things that bring us comfort, enjoyment, consolation, life. In the Bible, the wilderness was a place that was inhospitable to humans, the opposite of the sort of place where you'd want to settle down or stay for any length of time. When will this all end? is a cry we have heard so often during this lockdown period. But this wilderness, although we're told by Mark that it was hostile to human habitation, was home to other creatures, the beasts. Mark says that Jesus was with the wild animals. Anyone who's read the children's book, Where the Wild Things Are, by Maurice Sendak, knows that it's often tricky to tell whether the wild beasts are on your side or not. They're wild and untamable. They were not pets, of course, but Jesus doesn't seem to be threatened by them. Perhaps the wild beasts show us that mission in God's kingdom will never be safe or predictable. There may be a rumpus. But the wild beasts can become your friends if, like Jesus and Max, you are not afraid. Now, also in the wilderness, Jesus encounters angels who minister to him as they did to Elijah when he fled to the wilderness. Even this place, devoid of comfort and all of the things necessary for human life, even this place isn't without God's provision. So I wonder what this short and sharp description of Jesus facing temptation in the wilderness might offer to us by way of comfort 
and direction this Lent. Lent is a wilderness season, a time when we're confronted with our own weaknesses, but also invited to spend time alone and together reflecting on who we are, deepening our walk with God, hearing his voice of affirmation calling us to that walk of discipleship, ministry and mission that he has for each one of us. Now this Lent is also the time when we're reflecting on and launching our refreshed God for All vision, a vision to release the whole people of God for the whole mission of God, for the transformation of Cumbria in the name of Jesus. Now un uh, under that overarching vision sit four simple themes, to follow daily, to speak boldly, to care deeply and to tread gently. What might Jesus' testing in the wilderness show us about each of these? Well, firstly, we might notice that it was only after this time in the wilderness that Jesus began his mission of announcing the arrival of the kingdom of God. I pray that might be true for us as a diocese, as a Church of England, as a whole church of many different denominations. As we emerge from this wilderness experience, we may be tempted to head off in all sorts of different directions and those might be tempting, but they're not God's will for us. And so we need a clear sense of vision to know how and where God is calling us to minister for him in the days and weeks and months ahead. That might be true of us as individuals too. What is God bringing out of this time of trial for you? in terms of perhaps a new sense of direction, calling, ministry, perhaps a new call to follow daily in everyday life. Secondly, Jesus' time of testing in the wilderness might cause us to examine our relationship to the wild beasts, whether that's the metaphorical wild beast that we're afraid might stand in the way of our being able to fulfil something for God, perhaps the wild beasts of fear or cynicism or apathy. How can we learn to tame our fears, to make friends with the things that scare us most, so we can be as free as Jesus was, to live out our mission in this world. And how might Jesus being with the wild beasts cause us to think about the way we are with God's creation in the natural world, to tread gently? The Bible tells us that he was with the wild beasts in the same way that he was with his disciples. Perhaps God's creation is more of a partner in mission than we ever allow ourselves to realise. So as we seek to tread gently in the world this Lent, perhaps we might see the natural world as a significant part of that. And thirdly, perhaps we'll find the reassurance that even in these most difficult times, God sent his angels to care deeply for Jesus, and he does for us too. This Lent, I pray that we might each and as mission communities and churches become more and more aware of God's day-by-day -day provision for us, the unobtrusive ministry of angels. We are never alone. As a whole people of God, we're called to echo the care that God has for us in our care for each other, to care deeply for each other and for the communities in which he places us. Perhaps we need to ask ourselves today, Whose angel does God want me to be today? And from that point of quarantine, after his testing in the wilderness, after his choosing to follow God, not the temptations of Satan, Jesus bursts back onto the scene, fulfilling his mission, proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, speaking boldly. The time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. That's what we're called to do too, to speak boldly of all that God has shown and taught us, to speak boldly about the coming of his kingdom, a kingdom of justice, peace, wholeness, flourishing for all people and the created world. So over this coming Lent, let's pray that God would open our eyes and enlarge our hearts to see the possibilities of proclaiming in the power of his Holy Spirit the good news of his kingdom. 
Would you join me in praying together the Vision Refresh Prayer? Living Lord, as we offer to you our common life, refresh our vision that we may know your will and seek to follow in all your ways. May we follow daily as your disciples, care deeply for one another in community, speak boldly your gospel words of love and tread gently as faithful stewards of your goodness. We ask this in the power of your holy name as creator, redeemer and sustainer of our lives, today and forever. Amen.